Recently, we've been contacted by journalists from renowned media outlets as the rumors have begun to circulate about the Kempton Park Hospital reopening its doors. But what intrigues the likes of Heisgenoot and Marula Media was not only if the rumors are true, but more importantly, why did the massive hospital close down? This question has been plaguing the public for over 22 years. We decided it was time to unravel the mystery and answer the burning question. A few years ago, we received a comment on one of Charmaine's posts about the Kempton. We came into contact with a lady who worked at the hospital from 1992 up until the very day it closed its doors in 2000. Pietro was kind enough to tell us the whole story, a true eyewitness account as to what exactly happened to the prestigious Kempton Park Hospital. Pietro, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I really appreciate this. I think it's a topic that we've needed to discuss for a, for a very long time, and I'm, I'm really appreciative of the fact that you are willing to come on here and, and set the record straight, really. I think just for context for our audience, what is your connection with the Kempton Park Hospital? Okay, I was an admin staff member of the Kempton Park Hospital since 1992 up until the 31st of December 2000. Excellent. Uh, Pietro, I think the first thing that I probably would want to know is uh, there's a lot of misconception or speculation about when the notice was served that the hospital will be closing down. Can you give us a little bit more clarity on that? When we became a democratic country in 1996, in, it was around about in September of that year that we got um, called to a meeting to say that the hospital would be closing down. Uh, Peter, was there, was there a specific reason um, given by management why this process will be taking place? Okay, um, at that stage, the head office came in, um, they called us together in the assembly hall, and they told us that it was a political decision that came from um, the top structures in government to say that we are not servicing the community of Kempton Park Hospital and that we will be closing down. So, yeah. that's yeah. no other reason. Yeah, they just said we. It was never explained into detail. It just was. Um, we were just informed that we are closing down due to political reasons and that we are not serving the greater community of Kenton Park. At that stage, at that stage in the new democratic um, landscape of South Africa. Kenton Park Hospital mainly served the, the white community because we had all that white suburbs around the hospital. And um, at that stage also the, the taxi route wasn't um, as huge as it is today. So um, we were not actually on a taxi route or bus route at that stage in time. Pietro, can you give us a little bit of insight what it was like working at the Kempton Park Hospital when it was still a, obviously a functioning hospital? You know what, it was um, actually, I, I, I started living at Kempton Park Hospital in 1990 in the nurses' home, although at that stage I was working at Simbisa Hospital. Um, the general consensus was that it was a very good hospital. You know what, Kempton Park Hospital was an, a training hospital for nursing staff. Um, or, uh, yeah, um, our nurses went to the Anilatsky Nursing College in Joburg where they got training and when they came back did their practical at Kempton Park Hospital. We had, um, yeah, we had some of the best um, ner um, trained nurses in, I would say, the Gauteng area at that stage. Um, our nurses got... Um, Prices for, for best students overall. Um, service delivery was excellent. Came to what hospital was actually a very, very um, top notch hospital compared to um, local government hospitals at that stage. And I must say, also in a better state than I would say in our hospital. Peter, what can you tell me about a certain Dr. Esterazen? apparently a pediatrician at the Kempton Park Hospital, and there's a lot of controversy surrounding um, 
his employment, um, saying that he wasn't actually a qualified doctor. What, what exactly, do you know anything about that? Yes, he, was, he, was, he claimed to be a pediatrician. In those years, um, in our doctors submitted their qualifications, but it wasn't really a, a um, necessity to actually go and do investigations at that stage. Um, then he started practicing as a pediatrician at the hospital. Um, and only after a, a while, after there was a lot of incidents that took place, and um, doctors also started questioning his real qualification skills and then we started contacting the medical board and then that's why we re or then it was realized that this doctor was never a pediatrician, he was actually a nobody. That got his the knowledge that he had he got from reading medical books at that stage. And then what happened to Dr. Estrazen? Um, as far as I know, there was um, criminal charges brought against him and um, obviously um, he was um, fired from the hospital and then the, the normal criminal justice took over and as far as I know, he got a prison sentence. But um, there's, there's a lot of mixed or controversial decisions around Dr. Estrazen because some parents would say that he was a very good pediatrician and yes, obviously, um, you know, parents that lost children due to his hands would disagree with the parents that says he did a good job. Yes, obviously a very, very controversial subject. Um, um, if, you, if you check on Facebook, there's a lot of, there's two sides to the coin um, on, on this case. Petra, you say that uh, the hospital notific you got the notification um, in September of 1996. How did, how did it work from there on in? Was the, was the hospital systematically closed down or did everything just happen at once? How did you no, no, no. Um, it, it went over in a phase. Um, you know, we still had a lot of patients. We had staff members. So at that stage, um, it was actually... Um, Hectic. Because then they came and they said um, people could transfer to other institutions, um, people can go on early retirement, there was packages available for stock members. And um, we also started um, admitting less and less um, patients. You know, the, at that stage the um, OPD sections, they were referring people to the clinics um, well, in, in Kingdom Park at that stage, um, the municipal clinics had several buildings around different areas. Um, so some of the staff members or the nursing staff, they went to the clinics, the local municipality clinics. Some transferred to other hospitals, some went to the private sector. Um, you know, some, like I said, some went on pension, some went on early retirement, some went, took the packages. And our, our patients were referred to the other government hospitals like either Edenvale, Tempe, Salt, Oxford, Pannoni, and then also um, the local clinics around Kenton Park. So it was actually a long process to shut down the hospital. Um, it didn't happen overnight. Yeah, yeah, you know what, because um, they were still, a little, it was a, a tedious process. Because um, it's not like just you close your doors, you know, you still have to make sure your patients get the necessary treatment, food. Um, there were a lot of things that, that came with the closing down of the hospital. Um, you know, it's like staff members, they, they couldn't just go over to another hospital. The whole establishment had to be rearranged. At the other side, people, normal transfer process took place. Um, so, yeah, eventually there was still staff left, but the patients were, were no longer being admitted to the hospital. So, in phases, it just been, you know, people left, and then eventually it came to a point where there were only six people left. And it was our task to make sure that, um, you know, if there's queries, still payments to be made. Um, 
स्टॉक में इन्वेस्ट हो एडमिन कंपेंशन दैट दैट स्टॉक की मंच में कैन सरी वो इन मिलिशन स्टॉक ले क्या इन ओसे इन स्टार्टेस एस वोट्स वे इंटेक यू नो पीपल स्टार्टेड मूविंग आउट but the administration board there was still a lot of things to be done on that side having been at the hospital different um time frames um in the last decade or so um i've noticed there there was a lot of patient files um in some of the rooms um just left there and banned um was there any specific reason why they left all that stuff there okay all those 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 um records and store files you know um Kenton Park Hospital opened in the early 70s. So obviously there were patient records, administration staff files, and they were kept in like a record room. And government policy says that all records should be kept for seven years. Some some files are being can be destroyed in three to four years, but most files have to be kept for seven years. And um, those patient record files, I, I know when you went downstairs where the um, casualty department were, in the passage hall there was a lot of files in boxes. Um, those were records of patients that has been admitted to the hospital since 1902. And government said to us they will come and collect all those files, but that never happened. So obviously, By the time um, Kingston Park Hospital started closing down, until the time in 2000 or by now, um, those records um, are all being lying there because the, the, it never went to a, a, safe, a place for safekeeping, and um, yeah, it should have been actually destroyed a long time ago. I think another thing that uh, gives people the notion that. Uh, the Hospital was just abandoned overnight. As, as the amount of equipment that was that was left behind at the Kimter Park Hospital, uh, what what's the story with 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 all that uh, all that medical equipment that was that was abandoned? Uh, what happened is um, a letter was sent out to all the surrounding hospitals in in Gauteng at the at that stage, Pretoria, Pretoria, and and um. We informed the hospitals that we've got this and this equipment. So some of the equipment were transferred out to other institutions. It was like some beds, um, micro, you know, small equipment um, went to other hospitals, incubators, things like that. And then there was still a lot of um, stuff left that wasn't required by other institutions. Because with the new government, things also change. Change. They wanted to modernize it more than having the old furniture outside. So later on, in, in about 2005, they they started storing all redundant furniture from from all the other institutions, equipment that became obsolete were then sent to Kenton Park Hospital to be kept there. And that's why you, you will find a lot of furniture there, but it's not usable furniture anymore. It's actually actually redundant, obsolete furniture that's um, been stored at Kenton Park. One of the main reasons why we're having this conversation, uh, Pietro, is the fact that we've been contacted from, from my side and your side, we've been contacted by media outlets trying to to unravel the mystery of why the Kempton Park closed down and specifically from this notion that the hospital might be reopening. What is your thoughts on that? Do you think it's uh, it'll be a practical thing to, to op- reopen the hospital? Yeah. You know, in about 1999, uh, infrastru- I was also part of the infrastructure management team and we actually had a meeting um, at the hospital at that stage and the inspectors from DRD came and we went through because I used to find them to come and at least cut the grass but because even the boiler house, the, the mortuary, it, the cooking equipment, theatre equipment were all um, taken out, x-rays were taken out and transferred to other institutions. 
or being used as space to fix other boilers at other institutions, you must remember there's no more lines, there's no boil house. Yes. There's no lines, there's no gas lines. When I left in 2000, was round about the beginning of 99, we already had a problem with water. We had to take water every day to work. Um, the toilets were, weren't flushing anymore because all the pumps started um, rusting. They, they didn't function anymore. So there's no gas line, no water line, no, no um, heating ups or heating up system because there's no boilers. Okay, so then they did the infrastructure and at that stage they said the building on the outside looks very usable still. But on the inside, as you are, uh, you were there, so you saw with your own eyes, the vinyl from the from the walls are all peeling. Ninety nine percent of the windows are broken. In in the nurses home as well as the hospital, um, um, as you know, they made fires in the hospital. Some of those fires were burnt. Um, all the graffiti. Um. The, the doors that have been breaking or broken down, bathrooms that's been demolished, um, ceilings that have been falling in, the swimming pool at the nurses' home as well as the the lapa that used to be there is non existing anymore. Um, so at that stage already they said it's gonna be more cost effective to torn down the hospital and rebuild it and trying to fix it up. Now we've got 20 years later, or 22 years later, so you can imagine that um, the state that the hospital is in currently, um, I don't know if it's going to be possible. Um, the lifts are not working, not in the nurses' home, not in the hospital. It stopped working in 1989 already, the lift stopped working. So I don't know. It's a sad, sad. It was actually a very sad day the hospital closed down. I can I can imagine. Not only for the not only for the staff but for the for the community as well. You know, we were a great pillar and um, even if you think about it, we were we were situated in Kenton Park near the Our Tambo International Hospital, oh airport. And can you imagine if, if there's a, like a major disaster at the airport? Yes. And and we and we need car facilities or healthcare. We 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 find it because Iowa is the closest, and it, will it have the capacity to to assist if there's a major incident at the airport? So if they kept Kemper Park open, it would have been. I think we would have 265 or 270 bed hospital at that stage. And we had we had an um, intensive care neonatal unit at the hospital. So can you imagine with today's um, population growth, if they if they just left it open as it was, what huge contribution it could have been to not only the community of Kenton Park, but with it would have lifted the burden on Edenvale as well as on Tendisa Hospital. Yes. Yes. Um, that's great. My dad the TB hospital as well. I, I know we've got Seasway Tropical Disease Hospital in Edenvale. But you know what? Even if they said, okay, no, we make it a TB hospital. Um, the, I think that the little thing of um, reutilize re re the hospital if they didn't want to do primary health care anymore or Things like that. Even, can you remember what, or, or imagine what huge difference it could have made in COVID? Yes. No, I think there's no doubt that uh, Extra Hospital would have made a massive difference in um, in, in the COVID times. Uh, Pietro, uh, as, you, as you said, uh, as far as I understand, that that's, that's initially why the Kempton Park Hospital was built, to be closer to the airport for exactly that. Um, if there was... Uh, emergency case there, um, let's say a plane, you, you know, touch wood, the plane crashed or there was some kind of emergency landing that needed to take place. Um, 
what would they do with all those casualties? You know, as, as far as my memory is concerned, um, our vape is probably the closest to the airport. And I don't know if, if you know, the accessibility of, of the hospital will probably be um, the biggest challenge uh, at that if an emergency like that would occur. Yeah, like the main point is not only that, I don't know if you've ever been to Edinburgh or or any other health institution, but but I mean you you just need to read the newspaper to to see that um, people are lying on the ground, people yes. don't have beds, um, operations that need to be cancelled because there's no um, theatres available. Yes. So now you've, you've got a hospital of, uh, the size of Kenton Park that were giving um, such a good service to the community and now it's just standing there. Every year it gets a disclaimer from the AG, Auditor General, because they are, are incurring an, an expenditure, expenditure to pay the security staff. So that's millions of rands. Where you're paying for something that's standing there, going to to pieces, while well, that money can be utilised for something else. Yes. Or could have been spent on patient care. That's my opinion. Absolutely. Yes. No. Absolutely. Um. And as mentioned before, you know, um, the media outlets um contacting us to get more information on about this reopening, which for me is a completely ridiculous notion. Um. You know, we hear this rumors um, every every six or seven years that they might reopen uh, the Kempton Park Hospital. But I think, you know, my personal opinion is probably just uh, uh, the groundwork being laid for a new security company to to get the tender. And, you know, spending that amount of money on, on an institution like that and a completely useless building at this point. Um, it's it's completely ridiculous, and the amount of money that it will cost to to fix up that hospital is just. I just don't know where they will get the funding. I I, I do agree with you because you know what um the the security um I'm now they doing the the um guys walks at the hospital, and you know what it still stays private property. It's still the private property of the government. Yes. Department of Health, Department of Infrastructure, but they're paying a security company to 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 um to keep visitors out from entering the hospital. But what they're actually doing is the security is being paid for people to access the hospital, um because you can only go in if the security lets you go in. Yes, and actually that's trespassing. And I mean, you've been there, you've seen the damage that has been taken place. Mm. Um, it's not, it, it, the security is also playing a huge part. But I mean, um, if, if, if the security is doing their work, why is there fires being made in the hospital? Why is the walls full of graffiti? Yeah. Why have they they've, um, let the people demolish doors, bathrooms? Um, Stealing out light fittings, um, removing equipment that was stainless steel tables that were still there. Yeah. Um, but why? Why are the government paying a security company if that is happening at the hospital? Uh, I, I still feel after all these years, you know, it's sad to see a good running hospital going to pieces while there's. Thousands, now I'm saying millions, because cutting has got a lot of um, um, citizens. Um, seeing people sleeping on floors, waiting for hours at a clinic, sometimes not even being helped, because they are understaffed, overworked, mm -hmm. and this huge building that could have been a big benefit to the community, not just of Kenton Park. Um, Standing there, and it's been going to be so. Yes, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I think the notion for me is completely ridiculous. Um, that after letting the building decay for 22 years, that they now all of a sudden want to invest money in getting the 
the institution up and running again. It's it's a it's a it's absolutely absolutely ridiculous. Um, and if you, if you take you know I've, I've been there in different time frames as I as I mentioned through throughout the decade and when I was there um, I think in 2016 um, they already had the demolition plugs bought into their foundation to actually bring the building down. So my opinion would be that somebody's dragging out this process um, just to enrich some security company. Um, to just pass on the tender to the next guy and they they want to see how long they can drag this out for. Because somebody's obviously benefiting from, from not not tending to this problem. Yeah, you know what, and, and over the years I've, re I've read, even in the local um, Kempton Express, you know, <coughs> um, the, the, or the, the um, citizens living around the hospital complaining, you know, because the grass, since I left the, um, there's nobody asking can we cut the grass, you know, um, when the when the neighbours of the hospital or, or the surrounding areas, if they start putting too much pressure on the department, yes, they will come and cut the grass maybe once a year. So, um, I can believe that, that neighbours around the hospital are also fed up, because rats, mice, yes, um, the dust, there's a lot, you can go to Kempton Park, they were, since I've been there um, in 90, yeah, 1990, there always, there was a lot of dust, and they, they, they will still be there because the rats and the mice, they feed on, on the birds, or the birds feed on the rice and the mice and the rats, that's why there's water in the windows still um, not broken, but I mean, so they will go to the to the neighbours around the hospital as well. So it's a pest infested building actually at this stage. Yes. Uh, Pietro, can I can I just uh, I just want to take a few steps back and just uh, just ask you what what were those last days of the Kempton Park Hospital? What was it like? For me. Yes. Or for the staff. Yeah, I think uh, I think um, you can touch on both, if you don't mind. You know, it was it was like a like a family working. Um, there was a lot of tears, a lot of confusion, a lot of um, anger actually. Um, but I think most of all, it was like, um, what's going to happen? Um, the un you know, the fear of, of the unknown, actually. Um, people had to, had to um, actually sell their houses and move to other areas where they could find a post. So um, it was life-changing for all of us. And for me, um, well, as you know, like I said, you the lifts weren't working. There was no water. The, toilet, the toilets didn't work anymore. So that's why I actually left in December because I found and I said I can't I can't work in this environment actually anymore. And to be a single person in that whole building, um, it was not very nice. So that's why actually I left. And it was sad, you know, to to see from um mid of eighty nine. Yeah, eighty nine. Um to see, you know, how things change. It, it's sad when the trucks came and they removed the furniture. It was sad when you saw the people left hugging each other, crying. Um, you know, like I said, your um, Raymond, it was, it was, it wasn't very really nice. And and to, for the last time to drive out of that that gate, it was, it was sad because you saw what was going on. Uh, Full functionally, hundred percent working institution, and you and you drive out of that gate, and you and you know um, this building has played a significant role in so many people's lives. You know, we were we were one in in Kempton Park. I can't remember the the children's surname actually, but we were the first hospital with um, not triplets. Um, four twi um, twins were born at Kenton Park Hospital. 
Wow. We were the first hospital to do a, 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 I don't know what you call it, when you've got four babies, four twins. Uh, um, quad, quadruple, quadruple you know, or something. Yeah. We were the first hospital to, to deliver a quadruple um, twins babies. So, you know, in the hospital, there was there were a lot of milestones. Yeah, we had the Australian, Australian um, incident. But you know how many good, because we had the, the intensive care or, or um, baby unit, you know, all those, those um, pe um, pediatricians around the hospital, the gynecologists, you know, the, in, the, the specialized doctors, they all had practices around Kenton Park Hospital. And some of those doctors even um, gave up their free time to come in and see patients or, or at that stage, not maybe, um, you know, like, like um, to see patients for free. They didn't charge them anything. Wow. Um, you know, so um, all those doctors also had a connection with the hospital. And, and when the hospital closed down, obviously they some of had to move their practice practices to um, Ottawa. But yes, it played Kimpton Park. I think played a significant role in so many people's lives. Um, you know, old age, the old age homes. Um, like I said, you and um, Raymond, it was it was sad and it's still sad. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm just sitting here thinking now that you know. It, it seems like such a pity reason to close down a hospital that could have been of so much help and significance to the community. You know, even though it, it was closed because of only serving a certain type of, of um, et ethnic group, um, you know, th that's something that it could have, with time, could have been integrated into serving a greater expanse of the community. Uh, I mean, just, just shutting it down for political reasons is just, you know, just because it's serving a certain type of, you know, and, and, and we know what the country went through at those stages. There was a lot of, lot of integration that still needed to take place to include everyone. So it's just, uh, like you say, it's just so sad. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think, Vainan, it was just that um, it was a, a decision that was made, not clearly thought out. They didn't look at the long-term effect that it will have. And now, 20, 24 years later, um, people are starting to ask maybe the right kind of questions now. Yeah. And nobody is still, take, uh, or still willing to take responsibility for decisions that was made not clearly considered and, and thoughtful at that stage. Yes, you know, and I'm, and I'm just... It just baffles me that, you know, after all this time, the same things are still happening. We're having very, very poor decision making from government level. And I think most of the time it has to do with the people being in a position not being properly qualified to make these important decisions. And it's, it's not something that will ever go away, it seems, because, you know, it's 30 years on from, from um, when segregation ended. And, you know, our health um, departments, you know, the health institutions, it's just, um, it, it seems like it all started with the Kempton Park Hospital, you know, one ill decision after another. And that's where we are right now. Like you say, there's so many hospitals with, with patients lying on the floor, not being able to get health care. And, you know, and if it's been politically motivated to, to, to let the system deteriorate. Well, I must say, in my personal opinion, things still haven't changed at the Department of Health. You can go there every six months, we've got a new I or they've got a new HOD. Um, we've got that Kudani Mashangu in the news. We had Aaron Mozzaleri. All the half minute and Mikizi, it's like the Department of Health there's a, a lot of question marks. Decisions that have been made, but not the right decisions. Because they're not health professionals. 
Exactly. They've got, they may be dog tests, but they're not looking at the, it's what are beneficiary to them at this stage to make a name. Yes. But they don't think, <clears throat> they don't think further what consequences there might be on their decisions. And I think that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> Sorry, um, I came to the Park Hospital. They made a decision, didn't think it through clearly, um, and it came back to bite them in the bum. Yes, now I think we can, we can, we can have an all-hours discussion about that. Uh, Peter, I think the last question I would like to ask you is, did you experience anything while you were working at the hospital when it was still functioning? Was there, was there any activity that you, that you know of or any stories that you've heard? Well, when I'm, I left there, like I said, um, I was there for over 10 years. I was there alone. And um, nothing happened in the 10 years that, that I was part of Kenton Park Hospital. Even after that, when I went back to do certain or look for files and things like that, I never encountered any paranormal, paranormal effects or whatever. I think it's a thrill. Um, I'm not saying there's nothing going on, because I know there were satanic rituals being performed there while the hospital was closed. Um, but at this stage, yeah, I think it's a thrill. It's a it's an adventure. Yeah. So you will agree with me that there is no real mystery as to why the Kempton Park Hospital closed down? Um, no, no, no mystery. No Dr. Estreisen, no paranormal reasons why. It wasn't financial. It was solely based on political reasons after the new elections in 1994. How do you think this story ends? How does the story of the Kempton Park Hospital conclude? Tragic. Do you think they're going to eventually knock it down and uh, rebuild a new hospital, or how do you think how do you think this goes forward? Drag it out as long as possible, because um, I don't think the department or the country at this stage can afford to to um, revamp it. Because it's like doing the hospital all over again. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think... Yeah, you know, they have to go look at the infrastructure and, you know, if you don't look after something, it, it, it deteriorates after years. So even I think if they go and do a, a, a full building inspection, um, I think it would be better just to knock it down. Either sell the land or... or Give it to somebody that is actually willing. Because Kenton Park needs a hospital, right? And that, yes. that I, I can't, I can't say we don't need a private hospital or a public hospital. We definitely, Kenton Park needs it. Yes. So I would say then rather get a consortium, public, private sector, rebuild a hospital, even if you build a smaller hospital, but, but get another health institution in Kenton Park, because we, I'm staying in Benoni, but Benoni, Boxburg, Tembisa, Kenton, Eden, Midrand, we all need a new facility. Yes. They can have or host more beds, um, more training facilities, um, we need a new TP hospital, or there's so many things going on in this country currently that I really feel that they must not get all hospital. It, it's a sad part of Kenton Park. It's a sad part of the history of Kenton Park. Knock it down, rebuild a new hospital, or reappropriate that, that ground for something good. Yeah, because it's... it's Don't a... Make something bad, turn it into something good again. Yes. Now, from looking what um, Marula Media reported, I think it it kind of explains why the building is still, you know, they haven't decided to do anything yet because it will cost about one point five billion to knock it down, and then one point four billion to actually revamp the place. So I think that's where the stalemate comes from. That's why the institution is still um, standing there because no one can really make this decision. And concerning that, there's probably no funding to actually rebuild the hospital. They're spending more than 1.4 billion. 
on on the security services finance. So, how do you justify paying for a person to protect something that's not being protected, then just knocking it down um, and re reuse the land or repurpose that area? Um, so I, I, I don't understand. Why, why did they pay a, a, a security company that's not protecting in any case the building? Yeah, I think it just comes back to the whole politically motivated thing. Um, that the hospital's being kept open and not being demolished because some security company is getting 1.5 million every year for basically just doing nothing. Um, and yeah, that's I think that's the general consensus these days in, in South Africa that, you know, corruption will always um, take center stage and be more important than serving the greater community. And it's, you know, we could just take ESCOM as... A living example. I mean, where has anything that's concerning ESCOM ever been done for the citizens? But, but I think, you know what, we had a reunion <clears throat> just before COVID. Um, some of the admin staff and nursing staff, we actually had a, had a 20 year reunion in Kenton Park. You know what, and, and if you sit there and you listen to the stories that were told of, um, People saying, you know, um, it was the best years of their lives. Um, they, they remember small little details that some of us have forgotten over the years, you know. It is, Kingdom Park was really like a big u family unit. Um, and I think if you, if you speak to a lot of patients that got tough care from Kingdom Park Hospital, they would have... I will tell you, um, it was really a very good, clean um, hospital where they got excellent health care service. Yeah, no, Petru, it's, uh, it's an unbelievably sad story. And I, I really want to thank you for, for having the courage to, to come and speak about it publicly. And Because I think, you know, the government not really giving any reasons as to why and what um, has left a lot of room for speculation from the private sector and just just people just um, making up stories. Um, And I think it's good that we can we can have this opportunity to afford um, the truth to be told and exactly why these things have happened. But as you say, it's a it's a unbelievably sad story and had such an impact on so many people's lives. Oh, but but really, it was political motivated. Like I said, they just came in and I said they kind of closed the hospital. It was there was no discussions, nothing um, political motivated. Pietro, I want to thank you very much for for all your insight and uh, giving us a real um, eyewitness account of what occurred at the Kempton Park Hospital while it was closing down. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? No, not really. But like I said, still, I think it's a really sad story. Oh, it's 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 completely tragic, and I think it's it just fills people with a lot. You know, it's going to fill people with a lot of anger, just to the fact that it's just so selfish. You know, that's and that's that's a problem in this country. Nobody's thinking about the benefit of the the collective. It's all about the individuals. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's well, only, only time will tell if they will make a, a, um, a decision that will benefit the community in, in the end and not just somebody's pocket. Yeah. But, Pietro, thank you. Thank you very much for helping us decipher some of this mystery and uh, bringing some clarity to, to what exactly occurred and, and what's been going on there and completely sort of eradicating the speculation of why it closed down and bringing it to a factual point and, and, and something that um, is actually all around us and it's it's not really a surprise why it closed down. Thanks, Raymond. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more great South African paranormal content.